Psalms volume. I want to talk to the individual. I don't know your name. I don't know your struggle. I don't even know how bad it is. But the Lord has moved me through this week. In the twinkling of the night, in the middle of dreams, in a magnificent, miraculous way to know that it's my task today to remind somebody how faithful God is. Now, I don't want you to say amen too soon because sometimes we hear it and we say amen and don't digest it. And because of life, we forget that he's faithful. And it becomes cliche and we say faithful and we don't know what that means. And what we end up doing is saying amen without digesting intellectually, emotionally, and spiritually that God has promised you that everything he said will come to pass. That he's committed to you. No matter if you're rich, no matter if you're poor, no matter if you're right or you're wrong, but if you his, this is what he wants me to let you know. He got you. He wouldn't allow me to take my seat today because he has compelled me to share with someone that's broken, someone that has taken the white flag approach and waved it and said, I just give up. You here, I don't know what your prayer closet is. I don't know who you are. But God wants you to know, first and foremost, that I'm faithful. I need to rush to remind some of you before I read the text. Yeah, your friends, they unfaithful. Yeah, you've been unfaithful. Yeah, society is unfaithful. Your dog will be unfaithful. Your mama can be unfaithful. But when you get to God, there's only one word. He's faithful. Why is this so important? Because how are you a believer and you yet you believe that God is not going to do what he said? he would do. And some of you are approaching your life with the mindset of defeatism because you look at God like you do man as if he needs things to work out for him to work. And he, think he needs things to be lined up and for him to line it up. But I'm going to pause and I'm going to read the scripture. I want some true witnesses that know God does strange things to get great results. <laughs> that God will walk into a chaotic moment and turn it into a system of order right before your face where you would think it's a storm and God says, no, it's just a walk in the park. Mm -hmm. God knows how to let a hurricane hit. Tear down a house, Brother Dotson. Lift up a car. Take it to another city. Drop the car. And when they're looking for a child, they thought the child would be dead. 
because the car, the house was all swept away. And it was no way possible that the storm could stir, tear up the house, lift up the car, take the car feet, hundreds of feet in the air, take it miles away from the house, drop the car, crush the car, and when they looked in, in the car seat, there was a crying baby. God wanted you to know that when you thought the storm was out of order, as long as I'm in the storm, I still got you. Y'all missed it. Let's read this and let's get done with my work for today. Stay standing if you don't mind. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. With my mouth will I make known thy faithfulness to all generations. Listen to this. For I have said, this is the psalmist, mercy shall be built up forever. As long as I live, his mercy keeps building on my mess. Ooh. Mm -hmm. His mercy keeps building on my madness. Mm, Y'all still missed it. Even though everything is around me is unstable, his mercy is still stable. His house doesn't fall because of the winds or the waves or the sea. His mercy is still being built despite what you're going through. I need to pause right here, Pastor Bowden. It's too many of us quiet. And you've been recipients of his mercy building on your life. Although your life may not look like you want it to be. His mercy keeps building on the messy areas of your life. He says, why? While you looking at what's going on, he's still working. I wonder if I got one person, Sister Smith, to thank God for his mercy always working and building when we know we are in places we should not be. If somebody in here, you was in a place last night. And the only reason you didn't die in that place, his mercy was working on you. Overtime. Thy faithfulness shalt thou establish in the very heavens, the highest of heights. I have made a covenant with my chosen. I made a promise. I've sworn unto David, my servant. David, listen, thy seed will I establish forever. Build up thy throne to all generations. Selah, pause, think about that. And the heavens shall praise thy wonders. Cherubims, seraphims, angels, archangels will praise of the wonders of God that he does to man. Ooh we. What God is doing for you is so praiseworthy. Angels see it and they praise God for the wonders that he's doing over your life. Watch what the psalm is saying. I'm done. Oh Lord, say it. Oh Lord, thy faithfulness also in the congregation of the saints. He said, I'm going to praise you. Hmm? The heavens going to praise you. Because you've done some wondrous works. Then this is how he Oh, Lord. <laughs> Have you ever been there when you saw God do some wonders? Work? Oh, Lord. Have you ever got a bill that God paid? And he took care of it, and he took care of it, and you didn't know how you, oh, Lord. Psalms done got happy while he's writing, Sister Scotland. Hit you with a, oh, Lord. 
thy faithfulness also in the congregation of the believer, of the sheep, of the servant has been manifest and it should be praised. This is what I want to talk to you about for just a few minutes. In difficult times, remember his faithfulness. Help me preach this. In difficult times, in difficult times, remember his faithfulness. You may be seated. I have been in some difficult moments in life. Some I can discuss through the pulpit. Some I choose not to. But I've been in places where it didn't look like I was going to make it out of. Sometimes it was just a simple thing of going to work. And the society I live in didn't really want me to be successful, so they plotted my demise. And I began to carry a friend with me. His name wasn't Jesus, Smith and Wesson. And at one time, I would come out with one in the chamber, but I wouldn't leave it in the holster. I would have it in my hand because I couldn't see around that corner of my shop didn't have the blink that we have now on our phones where you can look around and see who's around you if you got cameras. I was walking out with a blind spot right here. And I would have the, my friend with me in my hand and I lock up and I wonder if this someone's going to rob me or someone who was upset with my stance in the shop or no cursing or Someone who was just jealous was going to take my life. Sometime I would dream it. I'd be sitting in my shop and someone would walk in and shoot me in the head. I wouldn't tell my wife. I would just go to work. Believing God had me covered. One night I had a vision I was walking in the shop, but this time, when I walked in, there was somebody opening the door with me, standing beside me, and they asked me a question. I couldn't see their face. They said, why do you carry the gun? And I was telling them in the dream of my recollection why I carried the gun. And, said, and I said, well, you don't, you're not with me all the time. And the individual said, I'm with you every time you open up. Years went by, things happened, and um, I stopped carrying that gun. And I began to hear from the streets how people had hits out on me, leaving out of a funeral one day. They were waiting to kill me because I had preached the gospel. And they had told everybody when he comes out, we're going to take his life. There was a commotion outside. I didn't have no gun anymore. I didn't even know it was taking place. Later that evening, some of the guys that were there told me what took place, why they left out immediately out of the funeral of this young man named Kale who was shot on, and left on his porch. He had, the guys there were upset because my stance for Christ and I wouldn't allow them to dishonor the funeral. He said, they were planning on killing you till you crazy. But when they started saying it, guys rushed out and let them know you can't touch him. And I realized then what I know 
now that there's some battles you don't know God fights for you. And if you don't know by now, you don't need nothing after you got Jesus. Because when you have not been faithful, he's always faithful. And I realize, Pastor Bolden, that many of us sometimes forget that we don't just praise God for what we see him do. Some of y'all need to praise him for the things you never knew that he did for you. And sometimes we get so caught up with what we see. Sister Singleton, we complain, we pout, we fuss, we get attitudes, we, we let go of our gratitude because circumstances have moved us to believe God is not being faithful. But I stopped by to share and remind somebody today even though times might be difficult for you, even though circumstances may be unfavorable right now, even though your marriage may be upside down and looks like uh, Stevie Wonder and Luther Vandross never get played, I need to let you know if God told you he got you, you need to remember his faithfulness in difficult times. I feel like I need some help in here. It's some folk in here. I don't want to call roll, but I need those who are living witnesses that you've been in difficult times and there are no moments in life. It's when you realize how faithful your God truly is. And the psalmist is now in a very difficult time in the nation of Israel, and they, the psalmist is writing of praising God in difficult times. And I need you to understand there is a prerequisite for every believer that you need to practice not only in difficult times, but throughout your walk of Christ, of Christ, is that's praising God through it all. You don't praise God just when it's preachers and cream. You don't praise God when you can pay your bills and you can shout because you got a little extra in the bank. But you got to learn how to praise God in difficult times. And the way you do that is when you think about his faithfulness in the past and think about all that he's done for you and realize that your God is faithful. Now, sometimes I believe the enemy does what he does, Sister Shania, in order to distract us, discourage us, and defeat us because he knows praise confuses the enemy. And in order to hush our hallelujahs and silence our amens, he allows some circumstances in our life and he attacks us in different areas to make us lose our favor, our fever, fever and our fire for the, the praising of God. And what we do, we show up to church and we wait for the song to be sung. We look for something to happen. We're looking for something to change before we shout and give God the glory. Pause, I need to give this to you. Listen, some things won't come down until you get your shout first. Okay, you missed it. Some walls won't move until you praise God first. Some things won't turn around until you get to a place where you'll just praise him anyhow. Some things will not be delivered into your home, into your life, until you can praise God through it. Where are the witnesses that know that? That sometimes you got to push past the pain, the problem, and the issues of life and just shout and give God glory Anyhow, it was a moment in 2020 where nothing looked like it was going to work out, and I just began to preach on praising God anyhow. In 2019, we was praising him. Someone asked me a question, Pastor, pa Pastor Brandon, what we going to do now? The same 
thing we were doing before because the same God that carried me in 2019 is going to carry me through 2020. What's that? I'm going to walk by faith and keep praising his name. If I'm sick, I'm going to praise him. If I can't pay my bills, I'm going to praise him. If the pews are empty, I'm going to praise him. And I wonder if I can take a time out moment for somebody that that's your testimony today. Yeah, my marriage is crazy, but I'm praising him anyhow. Yeah, my change is stranger, but I'm praising him anyhow. Yeah, my ministry ain't what it should be, but I'm praising him anyhow. And I stopped by to let the devil on assignment know that I stopped by to shout hallelujah to the Lamb of God because I'm going to praise him because he's been faithful. I've looked back over my life. I've been in some dark places, but I know God is faithful. I almost lost my mind, but I am a living witness. I got the scars to prove that he's been faithful. I am a living witness that even though the dark days come, I, that he's been faithful. You may look at my suit, may look at the car we drive, and think that I ain't had no hard times. But that's because he's been so faithful. I need some real Christians today. I need some folk that you know when you look in the mirror. You got to just talk and say, God, you know you've been good. Because I don't look like what I've been through. Me and Sister Grant were sitting there watching the door a couple weeks ago. And uh, someone came in and we found out her age was different than what we thought. And uh, before we were able to dismiss, Sister Grant began to praise God, wave her hands, and say, thank you, Jesus. Because she saw how good God had been to her. And she began to praise God because she realized if it had not been for the Lord on her side, she would look 20 years older than her age and instead of looking 20 years younger. Wasn't that she got everything right, but she realized God had put his hands on her and kept her through some dangerous seen and unseen and made her look better than what she'd been through. Now, I think I got a lot of Sister Grants in here that you look in the mirror sometime and you can't, you can't believe what God has done in your life. The reflection doesn't look like the surgery. The reflection doesn't look like the storm. The reflection doesn't look like the attic. The reflection doesn't look like the bad marriage. But when you look at it, somebody looks at you and you look back, it's yourself. You got to say, mm -mm, God been good to me. And if God been good to you then, that's a reminder in difficult times remember he's faithful sometimes you ain't got to go to your bible you can just go to your mirror and your mirror tell you because the scars on you tell you how God brought you through what you've been through and if he's been faithful before you are a living I need somebody to praise God with me you are a living witness that God can bring you through we are those who have been wore out, wounded and sad but God has blessed you with wounds that testify I had cancer but God God healed me. I had a heart surgery, but God brought me through. I've been beat up, but God brought me out. I've been broke, but God lifted me. And now I don't look like what I've been through. I was listening to Ivy Healer the other day. He said he had to pause. He began to get emotional. He said, I remember he's a very well-established pastor out of Texas. And he began to tell his testimony. How he said, I used to work for $60 a week. He said, I said $60 a week. He said, I worked on the yard for $60 a week. He said, I was going to church. He said, a non-tithing Negro, I tried to borrow some money from him. He looked at me and said, you go to church, don't you? He said, well, listen, if you give God your tithes, he'll bless you. He said, I went back. I'm like, I'm going to church. He don't even go to church. And I started tithing. He said, I came back to work, hadn't been to school or nothing, and I didn't have enough money to buy me no steel toe shoes. He said, so I get called into the, 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 the manager's office. The big head boss. So I'm thinking I'm getting fired because I broke regulation because I had fake till steel toed shoes on. He said, I started tithing this a week later and I go into the office. I'm thinking I'm about to get rolled up and fired. 
I sat down, and the boss said, listen, uh, your boss quit. He said, but before he left, he put your name in, saying that you're the one you want, he wants to take the job. He said, hold on before you say anything. He said, Yo, I know you don't have a degree. I know you don't have an education. But he put your name here to get the job that he quit. So what I want you to know, your next check, which will be this week, we're going to backdate your salary and pay you for being manager for the week you wasn't manager. He said on the, he, was on, he, was on, he was on the video, he said, he said, I got to pause for a moment, y'all forgive me. He said, even though he's wealthy now, he said, I want you to know every step of my life, every door that God opened, I shouldn't have been in it. He said, I got the job and I got the check, but I didn't do the work. He said, I, listen here, I wanted you to know how faithful God has been. And he began to shout because he thought about what God had did for him. I need to pause one more time because I feel it in my spirit. He, I be healing ain't the only one God that opened some doors and been faithful for. You got a job you don't deserve. You got a marriage you don't deserve. You've been blessing areas that you don't deserve. And you know as you look back over your life that that he's been faithful, and you're like the psalmist today. I'm going to tell every generation that I can that God has been faithful to me. He's loved me like nobody else can love me. He's been committed to me like nobody can be committed. He's dependable and trustworthy. And when I wake up in the morning, I'm going to tell somebody my story. Pastor, you got to give me an opportunity. He did it for me too. I was broke. He blessed me. I was sick. He healed me. I was in trouble. He got me out. I am a witness. I'm not going to sit quiet. 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 He been faithful. I can't hear you. You can complain loud. Can you praise loud? You can pout loud. Can you shout loud? Somebody in here, shout he been faithful. He been faithful in difficult times where my witness is at. Trina, think about his faithfulness. I know he loves me with loyalty. Not because of, but in spite of. Ooh, Dr. Chummy, they ain't say nothing. Mm -hmm. When I think about his faithfulness, and then I realize who I am, and what I've done, and what I'm ashamed of, and what I never thought God would use in my life. Sister Keisha Gary, if I look in the mirror and saw myself for who I am, I couldn't even stand to look at myself. But when I look at myself and see who he is, I don't see Terrence, I see a servant. I don't see a doctor, I see a sheep. I don't see a pastor, I, I see a saint. And all that comes from a savior. So when I see his faithfulness, Rick, and I think about his faithfulness, I realize he had to truly love me. Not because of, but in spite of all the mess, all oh, sister May, me and you and by ourselves. All the mess and thuggish and ugly thoughts I done had and deeds I done done, he loved me with loyalty. He's not like us, folk. He don't just love me when I can give you some flowers, some cards, some chocolates. He loves me despite all my ugly, ungodly, evil, fickle, 
finite way. Oh, he loves me. Well, he's so loyal to me. He goes where I go even though he don't want me to go there. He's so loyal to me. He wakes me up when he know I'm going to get messed up on that day. He's so loyal to me. Right, Minister Mike, he know I'm going to fuss after he bless me, but he bless me anyway. He's so loyal to me. He gives me not one more chance, another chance, after another chance, after another chance. And I'm not in here by myself, so don't you fool me. He done gave you another chance too. When I look at his faithfulness, I know he loves me with loyalty. He won't leave me when I mess up. He'll show up in my mess up. Clean me up, turn me around, put my feet on solid ground. That's why you can keep trying because God is always loyal. You better shout like you know he's been loyal to you. All this phony love today. People say you love you and they stab you in the back. Y'all know that. They stab you in the back. One day they're your friend. Next day they're plotting for your demise. But a faithful God we serve loves us with loyalty. So when you're in difficult times, reflect on the love that's loyal to you. Stop thinking about how somebody broke your heart. Can I just stop for a minute and just get this right? It's too many grieving folk in here. You're grieving that woman that left you. She done moved on. You still grieving. You grieving that Negro that got you pregnant and left you. Got you out here bad. You mad at somebody that got the job you wanted or the sibling that mistreated you or the church folk that didn't give you your just due or the pastor that didn't say hello to you. You grieving over foolish stuff. You got these emotional brokenness. You, you still struggling. And some children in here, I need, you missing the father that was not a father. You troubled by the fact that you got a mother, but she was never a nurturer. And here it is. The devil got you distracted on things that don't matter. And you got a God that loves you. You talk about loyal. When you think about in difficult times his loving loyalty, I promise you, you can't stay in the same mindset. When you think about how loyal he's been to you and the love that he's expressed to you, that agape, unconditional love, and it's been loyalty, it's hard to be mad at your enemies when you know he's loving on you. It's hard to complain that you're all by yourself when you know he loves you. So when you're in that difficult moment of loneliness and depression try to creep its way into your mental aptitude and tell you you're not going to make it, you got to talk back to him. You must forgot. He loves me. <laughs> How I know I'm going to make it? He loves me. How you know everything going to be all right? Because he loves me. Y'all missed it. All right. How, how you know you're going to get out this storm? Because he loves me. How you know you're going to get out this court case? Because he loves me. How you know your children going to be all right? Because he loves them. And if he loves me, he knows how to take. He knows how to take care of me. You think you know how to take care of your child and he doesn't listen. He said, if you know as a, as a man how to give your children good things, don't you know my father in heaven is better than you and here you are tripping and I love you and you don't know that I love you and you already got your head down and you don't know how to praise in difficult times. The fact I love you and I'm loyal to you, you ought to shout thanking God because you know it's going to work out for your favor because if you know how to be good 
good as a foolish sinner like we are. You ought to know your Father in heaven got you covered. I need three people just raise your hand. If you know God loves you with loyalty and you stand in agreement with me that his love and loyalty is enough for you to praise him right now. I got enough. I don't need my bills paid. I'll praise him for his love. in difficult times, the psalmist is in this difficult place. Talked about it early. Sister Chumney, the reason he's reading this, he's reading scripture and encouraging himself of the promises of God to David because it doesn't look like the promise going to come to pass. If I had time, I would do it this way, Sister Scotland. I would deal with the praise, I would deal with the problem, I would deal with the promise, then I would deal with the praise again. But I ain't got time. But because I need you to get this, and I don't know who you are, because you've been pouting in your prayer cloth, and God want me to tell you shut up. Because you're doing more complaining than you're doing praising. Let me let, let me let me stop. I need to talk. I don't know who I, I don't know who God got me up here. You've been complaining about everything. You in your closet, you done been complaining so long, you don't even think it's you complaining. Yeah. If you wake up in the morning and you got anything other than thank you, in the COVID-19 chapter four, <laughs> monkey pox chapter one, inflation, $5 gas, Cereal, almost the same price as a steak now. You was making, you got your raise, but as soon as you got a raise, they raised everything you needed. So you're making $200 more on your check, but you need 300 to make it through the week. What you need to do is, in difficult times, like the psalmist, stop focusing on the things around you and focus on the one who got you. Let me leave you. Let me leave you. Three things the psalmist did in this text. First of all, he reflected on God's promises. And he knew that if God promised it, he would perform it. Write that down. When you know God promised you something, reflect on that and begin to recite it. This is free. In any walk of faith that you see in the Bible, there will be a time that there will be a difficult moment for you to hold on faith. This is free now, and that's the mist of the journey. You're not there yet, but you're getting closer than you was when you began. And in that mist, Minister Mike, Reverend Nevels, in the Bible you see David in the midst of his walk of faith before he got to the palace. He had to lose his mind in a cave. He was at his very lowest in Ziklag. He lost his wife. He lost all his children. He lost all his his military stuff, and he was ready to kill him. And at that moment, he had to encourage himself. And when you see Elisha, it was at that moment after the Mount Carmel experience, and he was on that walk of faith, and after he had spoken that it would not rain on his word, that Jezebel threatened that she would kill him like he had killed her prophets, that he had to have this struggle where it was a pull, are you going to believe me even now? And a lot of us, we don't like to be in that mist season like the disciples when they were rowing in the boat in the storm and they got in the mist of the sea. And that was the mist of the sea. 
I didn't know if they was going to make it because it was too far to go back and it was too far from them destination and the wind and the waves was pressing against them and they were really rowing but not going nowhere. Side note, I need to give you this. Whenever you feel like you're not going nowhere, that's when Jesus is about to show up in your story. Listen, 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 listen. It's in that midst of the walk of your faith that you're in a testing season, Abraham, that God want to see. Are you? He already know, but he needs you to see what's really in you because what's in you will not come out of you until you learn how to deal with faith in a crisis. And if you can't deal with faith in a crisis, you will not deal with a Christ that deals with faith in a crisis. Let me say that again. If you can't have faith in a crisis, Sister Cooper, you will not be able to deal with a God who's the Christ of your crisis because in order to walk with him, how can two walk together unless they agree? Preach Reverend Garrett, I'm trying to. He said, listen, you got to walk by faith and not by sight. And the only way you can activate your faith, you got to have attention that's trying to resist your faith so you can press through your faith because the Christ you serve will only walk by faith and then sometime he'll take you in the valleys. That's the shadow of death. And if you ain't got faith, you can't see him in dark valleys unless you got a spiritual eye. And that spiritual eye is connected to your faith. So what you got to do in those difficult moments of life is have faith enough to not see what's around you, but see See the one walking with you. That's why Psalm 23 said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I can't see nothing down here, but thou art with me. Can I talk to somebody in here today? When you got faith, you got to deal with the mist of time of your walk. When it gets tight, when it looks like everything's wrong, and what do you do then? You reflect on that promise. What promise do I got that he'll never leave you nor forsake you? What promise do I got that no weapon for against you will prosper. What promise do I got? He said, watch this now. He said, no weapon formed against you will prosper, but all things work together for the good of those who love the world. What promise do I got that you're more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus? When you're in that difficult time, look back at your promise. I'm going to leave you. I'm done now. Got some more points. But I think for whoever I'm talking to, you got it. I know it don't look like it's supposed to. I know it looks like the devil is winning, but he can't never win. I know it don't look like you're about to be the business owner God said you would be, but he ain't going to do it the way everybody else do it because you're not serving everybody, God. You ain't a everybody. The Bible said you a new creature. Behold, all things are passed away, and behold, all things are now made new. Quit looking at things and trying to add them up like you're an accountant. But when you look at everything and get discouraged, I want you to get through your difficult times and remember you got a promise over your life. And whenever you got a promise over your life, uh, you ought to change your posture and move from being a problematic complainer to a praise warrior and tell God if I'm in the midst of my struggle, now, if the devil's all around me and the enemy's trying to take my stuff uh, and demons are trying to get in my children, in my mind, uh, there's a good chance you're getting ready to do something great in my life. Uh, and I can't close if I ain't got a witness somewhere that somebody who's been walking with with Jesus talking with Jesus you know sometimes it get hard but when it get hard and get darker God does his best work in our lives and somebody in here you ought to testify and say I am a, a witness that I know that when it get hard my God will show up when it get dark my lid in the valley will show up when it get dark I got a bright and morning star when I'm hungry I know Jehovah Jireh and when it get 
just like I'm not going to make it. I'm going to push past all my problems and become a prayer warrior. I'm going to become a prayer praise warrior. What you going to do? I'm going to look back over my life and think about how good he's been. I'm going to think about when I thought I wasn't going to make it, but my God showed up. I'm going to think about when the devil said it was over, but my God said it wasn't over. I'm going to think about his goodness and all he's done for me. And when I think about his goodness, I don't need no music. I don't need no choir. I got some joy bells down in my soul. When I think about the goodness of the Lord, I can shout by myself. I can clap by myself. I can dance by myself. Do I got a saved person in here that you've had church? You wasn't in the building. You might have been in your car. You might have been outside your doctor's office. But God been so good to you. You began to shout, thank you, Jesus, for saving a wretch like me. Thank you, Jesus, for setting my soul free. I don't need nobody. I'm my own choir, and I got my own horn. I praise you because you've been good to me. Is there anybody in here that know Jesus been good to them? Is there anybody in here ever felt his low love? Is there anybody in here that he's been faithful to? If you know he's all right, shout yeah. If you ever tried my Jesus, shout yeah. If you know he died for you, shout yeah. If you know he got up for you, shout yeah. If you know he gonna keep you, shout yeah. Yeah, yeah. Everybody stand. But Brandon, this is for you. We're going to have a conversation. They're going to eavesdrop. When life gets its worst, when the way gets the very darkest, and you begin to expect something great. Let me teach this real quick. Whenever God allows dark days, whenever God allows raging storms over believers' life, he never allows it without having something of a blessing behind his path. Hezekiah was told by the prophet Isaiah, get your house in order. He turned to the wall. He was sick unto death. He asked God. He said, Lord, I've been faithful. And I need you to give me some more time. The prophet was given a dispatch before he could leave the palace. Go back. I know I sent you to tell him to get his house in order. But go back and tell him I added 15 more years to his life. That's not the miracle. And I want my child to know if he's been faithful to me, he can't be out faithful to a God who is all faithful. And when you go in there, Isaiah, you tell him he can have one or two things. The sundial can go up or the sundial can go down. He said, whichever one he wants, you tell him I can provide. Hezekiah says, the easy thing for the sundown to go down. He said, I need to see if he, I want to know, is God telling me I got these years? Sun can go down, they do that every day. But I ain't never seen a gold sun go back up. He said, let, me, let the sun go up a little bit. And when he went out, when he turned around, sun went back up. Hezekiah received something. And I'm done. I told you I was done. But this is for you, Brandon. God got a miracle because of your struggle. 
God got a blessing behind his back because of what you've been through. Oh, well, he ain't by himself. God got a blessing behind his back because you've been faithful. I wish I could tell how good God is, but I ain't got to tell it because I see it all over the room. <laughs> and if he's been good to you, and you know he's been good, and he's been faithful, and you know he's been faithful, I stop by to tell you that he got a blessing behind his back. If your way's been hard and the going's been tough, you better get your praise on. You better get your praise shoes ready. This is a rehearsal for the next level. And you know he's been good. And you know time's been hard. I want you to stop and give him the praise because he got a miracle right behind his back. And I can't hear you down here. Don't you fool me. If you know he's been faithful and you know your life's been hard, you better give God the praise for the blessing behind his back. Somebody give my God your best praise for the blessing behind his back. Shout yeah. He's been good. He's been good. I know he's been good. I... Doors of the church is open. Father, we thank you for your faithfulness, for your promise. Now we praise you. We give you glory. Lord, there's somebody that needs to know you for the free pardon of their sin. They need to know your promise of giving us a Savior named Jesus came through difficult times. They need to know that this psalmist saw the promise to come to pass, not in his life, but in faith he knew it would come to pass in generations to come. Lord, they need to know that promise was Jesus Christ who died on the cross for our sins, buried him three days he rose. And we know because you rose, you are faithful, God. Now, Lord, I eradicate, I rebuke every voice of the enemy that's trying to tell that individual today that you will not keep your promise. Lord, we ask that as we open the door to these churches, that that individual that is still out of arc of safety, that one that needs to come by Christian experience or candidate for baptism, they accept Christ as their Savior right now. And they know to remember your faithfulness in difficult times. We love you, Jesus. And we thank you for your faithfulness. Doors of the church is open. Brandon, you feel like giving us a song? We thank you for watching this video, and we pray that you'll be with us at 8 o'clock and 10.30 in-person service on this Sunday.